Well, hello and welcome to Subway NIBFA today. In today's show, we'll be looking back at the games from March from the National League, the National League Cup and the NIBFA Cup. I'll be joined by Nigel Best, former head of coach education at the Irish FA and Nigel's selection for March goal of the month will be put forward to compete with all the others for end of season prize. Four tickets to the Irish Cup final, a new pair of boots plus a meal at Subway for four. Now our first match saw Cliftonville and Glentoran's under-16s go toe-to-toe in the NIBFA Cup. Johnny Martin, watch this one. Edge of the box, and it's hoisted clear. So five minutes on the clock, we're halfway through this first period. Chance for Cliftonville. Referee has the decision to make, and he points to the spot. Cliftonville awarded the penalty. The challenge coming in on Kevin McAllister. Cliftonville with the penalty. So the referee surrounded by Glentorn players. They're not happy, but he has made his decision. Big moment in the match. Shea Reed places the ball. Shea Reed places the ball. We wait for the whistle. And he scores. That's a fine penalty from Shea Reed. Cliftonville, 1 0 ahead. Firstly, welcome to the show, Nigel. Thank you. <laughs> nice to be here, obviously. I enjoy anything to do with uh, the youth league, so I'm pleased to be here. Uh, the game we've just watched, not too many chances in that match. Uh, no surprise, it was decided by a penalty. Was it a penalty for you? I think it was, in fairness. Um, although the Cliftonville player managed to, to get a foot on the ball to make the shot, nevertheless he was properly taken out by the goalkeeper. For us, the goalkeeper, he was brave as well to come out like that. But I think it was a penalty kick. And um, again, from the p- point of view of the player who was taking it, which was, I think, Shea Reid, yeah. um, he, his composure, yeah. because he had to wait for a period of time because Glen Torn players were disputing, etc. And to maintain his concentration and composure, I think, was top class. And the actual strike and technique of the, the penalty was top class again. Yeah, he dispatched it so well. Next up is a clash between Larn and Aquinas in the under-14 NIBFA Cup. That game took place at Allen Park. Seven goals in this one, all for the one team. Let's take a look. Takes the throw in. He crosses. Larn have it inside the area. Shot comes in. And Larn go 1-0 ahead. And the ball has been turned in at the back post by Lennon McCann. So confirmation of the goal scored by Lennon McCann. He was in the right place at the right time. And Lauren with a 1-0 lead. Jack Owens. Tried to make the pass for Quinnis. Golden chance for... Lauren and they've doubled the lead. Jimmy Harper. Jimmy Harper found himself in acres of space down the left wing, and that's a classy finish from Jimmy Harper. Another save made by Owen Shannon as Lauren tried to. Well, he did cross from the left wing. Lauren coming forward again. Tommaso Kane. And it's tucked home. And Lauren get a third. Second goal for Lennon McCann. Lennon McCann, the player in shot there. Following up like any good striker should. And another one for Lauren. The goals keep coming. 
here comes the corner. Flicked on. And it's been touched home. It's five now. And it's a second goal for Corey Ramsey. Jude Crawford emerges with it in midfield. Makes the pass towards Daniel Hashim. Gives it out towards the right. Cross comes in towards the back post area. And it's been turned in by Jamie Harper. And Lauren go 6 nil ahead. Callum Tweedy brings it forward. Good running this from Tweedy. Still carries it. Makes the pass. Shot comes in. Great save. Was it cleared off the line? Danger still not cleared. And Lauren have scored another. This one here might go to the dubious goals panel. It may have been an own goal. Well, Nigel, that game turned out to be a bit of a mismatch, I think, in terms of the two sides, a resounding win in the end for Lauren. Yeah, it was um, a bit of a disappointing day for the Aquinas boys, and uh, you feel for them against uh, a rampant Lauren team, as you say, who were ruthless. They, they went consistently for the scores, and when I looked through the number of goals, there were some really, really good goals in them. The one that I picked out, Jamie Harper's finish to make it 6-0, it was a perfect end for me to a great team move. Absolutely, and it was on one of my lists, uh, it was on the list that I had as one of my choices potentially. And what I liked about it was when you looked at the Lauren midfield consistently in this match, when they were in possession, they looked to play forward. The passes were well weighted. The penetration was excellent. And in the move you selected, which I thought was good, they get the ball forward quickly there's a good cross and then the ball's into the back post and it's a goal and it's very difficult for opposition to play against that level of quality. And a final word then for Aquinas, what do you do, you're the manager, um, to get them G'd up I suppose for the next game? Well it's very difficult because you know, I only saw clips of it and in fairness to the Aquinas boys, they didn't look as though they really dropped their head, they just I suppose had to deal with the fact they were outclassed and I'm sure the manager can be able to talk them through that. But it's good to see young players out and it's not necessarily always about the score. Participation is an important factor as well and uh, hopefully they, they don't drop their heads and, and quit on the, base, on the basis of one result like that. Thanks very much for now. Game three was at the dub in Belfast. It features Glyn Torin and Cole Rain in the Under-16 National League Cup. Which way would this one go? Here's Zach Spence, left footed. Whips the ball in towards the box. And there's a header. It nestles in the corner. And that was a great set piece from Cole Rain. There's the early warning sign. They disposed of Rosario in the last round as we see an opportunity for Cole Rain. And they score second time around. Bit of miscommunication at the back for Glen Tour in there. And it's Logan McKeeman who scores for Cool Rain. Well, opportunity here for Cool Rain. May well be ruled out though. It doesn't appear to be. And another mistake in the Glentoran back line. And Coleraine have gone 3-0 up. A second goal. Straight after the break here. And he scored again like he did in the first half. It's Tyler Ritchie. There's an opportunity for Harvey Campbell. Easy take this time for Josh Valamuli. You can see just two Glentoran players up top, but it might fall for them here. Opportunity for Glentoran, and they have scored a goal back through Alex Greer. And here is the opportunity 
that Tyler Ritchie was hoping for. It's a difficult angle. He scored two goals so far in this game. Ritchie, can he find the top corner? He doesn't do. But his free kick leads to another Coleraine goal. And it's tapped in. And Coleraine very definitely look to be going in to the semi-finals of the National League Cup. So a good win for the Bandsiders who progressed to the next round of the Cup. Glenn Tour and Nigel, there were no match for them really on that day. What did you make of that game? Well, I was impressed with Glenn Tour, or sorry, with Coleraine, and I was disappointed to some extent with the Glen Torren defending. It may just have been an off day, but certainly Coleraine were incisive and they had a number of potentially very good players showing it up well during the course of the match. We talked, I think, off air about the prominence, the heading ability and the front line play as well. Tyler Ritchie, he played a key role there, two goals and an assist. He was a standout performer for Coleraine. Well, it's very hard to find a front leader in a team at the moment. Those players are the ones that get the big money and they get the headlines. And to see a player at this age group so prominent in a match, to be able to score goals, lead the front line and create assists as well, I was very impressed with him. Thanks very much. Uh, next up, it's a Belfast derby between Linfield and Cliftonville in the under-15 NIBFA Cup at Allen Park in Antrim. This one had just about everything in it. Jack May in possession. Linfield trying to attack down the right side off the pitch. Of course, will take this set piece with his left foot. Chance to whip the ball into the area. Here comes a set piece. Ball comes in towards the front post area. And it's ended up in the net. I think a goalkeeper came for it. But the ball has ended up in the net. And the Linfield team congratulate their number three, Sonny Trainer. Linfield, 1-0 ahead. Ball given in field. Linfield attacking down the left side. As Logan McKnight gets inside the area. Cuts the ball back. Shot comes in, and Linfield double the lead. Ball was cut back from Logan McKnight down the left wing. Nice pass there from Linfield's number eight, Finlay Ross. Played the ball into the feet of a teammate defender. Linfield coming forward, strike comes in, hard and low, and it's ended up in the bottom right corner. And it's our number 10, Stephen Kelly with the strike. Fantastic effort into the bottom right corner. Linfield, 3-0 ahead. There is the player in shot, Corin Madden. Referee blows a whistle. Ball played in. And it's ended up in the net. Corin Madden with the goal. And Cliftonville are on the score sheet. Corin Madden with the corner for the Reds. Ball into the area. Ball, oh, oh. play back in. Shot comes in. What a fine goal for Cliftonville. No doubt about this one. Paul Stamfield with a fantastic finish. Cliftonville go back to their goalkeeper, Daniel Bell. Corin Madden drives forward for Cliftonville. Corin Madden, very highly rated player. And he's showing that tonight. Whips the ball in. To a great area. And Clifton Villa level. And it's our number nine. Eamon Toehill. Who makes it three apiece. Cross comes in. Can Linfield work a shooting opportunity? Header comes in, and that's fine header from Linfield. Linfield's number nine, Jack May, with the header. Confirmation of that goal, scored by Linfield's number nine, Jack May. A well-timed header. Run, run. Cliftonville player, ball down the line, nice pass from Ryland Perry. Yes! Yes! 
and Cliftonville getting the score sheet now. What a cup tie this is. Can either team win this in extra time without a penalty shootout? That's the question. We have roughly seven minutes left to find out. Ball played forward. Eamon Toehill. Toehill makes a pass. Chance for a shot. Hard and low. Goalkeeper doesn't gather it. Cliftonville score. And it's Eamon Toehill. Eamon Toehill was alert. Tucked the ball home. Nigel, as cup ties go, that was absolutely sensational. You, you would have paid money to watch that there. I mean, that was a superb example of youth football and quality of play, individual technique, the type of goals that were scored, heading, shots, tappings, really super game. And the narrative to the game as well, 3-0 Linfield were ahead, but yet Cliftonville clawed them back. Well, a lot of teams don't come back at 3-0 and it's mentally, particularly for young boys, it's hard to come back when, when there's such a big deficit. But in fairness to Cliftonville, once they got that first goal, they clawed themselves back in. And they did it again in the extra time because I think Lampede went 4-3 up and Cliftonville came back. Really super game. Yeah, and then in extra time, of course, the Reds had Eamon Toehill to thank for being on hand to put them into the second round. It was uh, it, it just blew my mind watching that. Yeah, Toehill looks a good player. I mean, he, again, it's a, a front player who knows where to be at the right time. And a variety of goals. I think there was a header and a a follow-up for a tap-in, but he looks a good player as well, and certainly we're talked about one other Cliftonville player in this. Yeah, we, we've talked about him quite a bit in yeah. recent months. Corin Madden looks a real deal, doesn't he? Absolutely. I mean, his influence for Cliftonville in the match was significant, whether it was set pieces, whether it was in his general play. Um, he's a superb cross for one of the goals, but he looks a very gifted player. One to look out for, for sure. Now, in our next game, Hillsborough Boys and St Mary's went head-to-head. -head. Uh, it was in our final match. It was in the Under-16 National League. Back now with the Hillsborough goalkeeper. Ball down the line. That's good chasing this from James Hamilton. Chance for Hillsborough Boys! And they've scored right from the start. It's number seven, Adam Hull-White. Goal for the hosts inside the first minute. And that was all too easy for Hillsborough boys. Play from the left to the right. Here is Lou Worthy. That'll fall to Aaron Connolly. And again, shot on target was from Finbar Maxwell. Didn't work out, but uh, struggling to clear here. Could be an opportunity in for the equaliser. There's a well taken goal in the end for St Mary's. The goal scorer, Aaron Connolly. And the ball's back with Heatley. Looks for options and only succeeds in finding. Now St Mary's player, Finbar Maxwell it was, and he's dropped it here, and there's a second goal for Aaron Connolly. Chance for Jennings to get the cross in, Jennings is all the way to the back post, and they have scored again, St Mary's. This time the goal scorer, Caleb Lewworthy. Opportunity for Jennings. He could score here. And he does. Michael Jennings has pretty much put this game to bed. Nigel Hillsborough absolutely flew out of the blocks, taking the lead inside the first minute. But St Mary showed exactly why they went into that match yeah, as favourites. Yeah, again, it's another example at this level of football where young players have resilience. Um, certainly that's an example in this game because Hillsborough started well but they were pegged back and eventually they were beaten.
convincingly. Yeah. The final goal of the game uh, for me, that was the best goal for me in that game. Michael Jennings, tremendous right back. I think he took up uh, possession inside, midway inside his own half, yeah. dodged a couple of challenges and then coolly slotted home. Yeah, they knew Connor Bradley in a sense. <laughs> but, because if, interestingly, he set up the goal before that by getting right into the opposition area and pulling the ball back from the dead ball line for a tap-in. So he obviously a player who's capable of getting forward. But this was one of the few goals where it was clearly individual work. He intercepts, he wins the ball and he just drives past players and calmly around the goalkeeper. Really good goal. Brilliant. Um, let's move on to talk a bit about yourself. How's life treating you? I was surprised <laughs> recently to know that, uh, or to find out actually, that um, you're in retirement now? Yeah, I've, I've retired from the, the position at the Irish FA. I felt it was time and obviously there needs to be at some point an opportunity for young blood to come in and regenerate the whole area that I was involved in, for example, which was coach education. So I'm just watching games now, mainly the senior matches, and uh, hopefully enjoy. I'm thinking of taking golf up if my knees can stick it, you know. <laughs> well, uh, in your time at the Irish FA, give us a sense of where football was at an underage level and where it's got to now. Well, that's a, that's a good question because when I left teaching and it was 2005 to go in the Irish FA, the role I had was to set up a, an excellence programme, which was the, the forerunner of the current elite programme that Andy Water was in charge of. So uh, we in the Irish FA had nothing really that was fully supporting the youth leagues and youth football in the province. So that um, programme created six county um, programmes mm -hmm. with quality coaches in each, uh, leading them, a good ex internationals, etc. And that was my first eye opener to, to youth football. There was a lot of good work going on at the various leagues, whether you're looking at one end of Scaled and the Scale, and then you're looking at hot spots like Belfast, etc. And, and credit to the coaches and volunteers involved. But I mean, there was a need to drive the players forward technically because we were falling behind at international level mm -hmm. and we were also beginning to find it difficult to get young players across the English clubs. So uh, there needed support at club level and that's what the RSFA tried. But I think what I have noticed is that progress made at club level across mm -hmm. the leagues is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's definitely good to hear. And give us a sense of the big names who have come across in your time at the Irish FA to get their coaching badges, because I used to look on quite enviously, actually, around some of those social media posts and see yeah. some of the some of the superstars of the game. Yeah, we've had quite a few come through. I mean, there are a number in the Premier League, uh, the coaching staff and technical director at Newcastle, for example, um, is one of ours. Uh, even uh, Sean Dice at uh, Everton mm -hmm. came through our system so there are a number in the Premier League and a number in the leagues below that as well O'Neill uh, at, uh, at uh, where's he at um, Wolves yeah. yeah is it O'Neill it is my head's going Aye, Gary yeah, Gary O'Neill came right. through super coach yeah. and then in the lower divisions I said and then in terms of foreign ones, yeah. the one I'm looking at at the minute is Ruben Amorum at Sporting Lisbon, who's Talk been of him associated. Going to Liverpool? Absolutely, and he was a super young coach coming yeah. through, one of a number of the Portuguese that came through, and, and Spanish, and even Lou. French. Mendieta. Mendieta. Yeah. Uh, loads. So Tiago, yeah. all of those guys came on the courses, and I'm sure people wondered why um, that was oh, happening really? and why they were being allowed and really what it was was to give our own coaches a flavour of that level so that they could understand that when they're coaching and when they're saying this is a great young player here they need really a clear comparison with what really a good player does look yeah. like so it was beneficial and they made good contact so i think or i hope that it helped local coaches on the courses as well I think it will have done uh finally for today nigel if i could ask you for uh, your goal of the month choice it was a difficult choice. 
Absolutely, because I was looking at a range of um, options here. Some were fine individual goals, some involved superb individual technique, and we were discussing it. Two of the techniques that are very difficult for young players are heading and volleying, and then there were a couple of examples of superb midfield passing movements that resulted in goals, and then at the end, the Jennings goal where he, he runs through the opposition. But the selection I'm, I'm going for is one of those which shows or displays high quality individual technique. And I think it's, it's um, Paul Stanfield at Cliftonville. Um, it came from a, a diagonal ball through him. And the reason why I chose it, it's a, not only is it a hard technique, but he requires composure to be able to watch the ball come in, get his body in good shape, to be able to be flexible enough to get the hips rotating and to get the knee in the right position to keep the ball down. It was absolutely superb. And senior players would be happy if they ever made one of those in their lifetime. Great. You know, so a really good goal. And congratulations to him for that goal. Great choice. So Paul Stanfield goes into the hat for our end of season prize. A winner will be selected from a public vote from all the goals of the month and voting will open soon so do keep an eye out for that that amazing prize will be a new pair of football boots up to the value of 150 pounds four tickets to the irish cup final in may and a meal for four in a local subway store thanks nigel for joining us today pleasure pleasure enjoyed your company do tune in next time to catch up with the best of the action on subway nibfa today thanks for watching For the next 30 mouth-watering seconds, you'll be enjoying the world-famous Subway Footlong Sub. Sit back and take it in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And done. Yeah, that's a lot of food.